so you you say what doesn't mean matrices you check with the quadratic form yes uh yeah yeah your my my microphone is not working yeah so, so, uh, so your 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 your, your question is uh let me try to rephrase if uh, you choose uh, large arguments in your function then numerical derivatives do, uh, doesn't work so so well yeah it it may be because uh, your increment uh, epsilon where you increment the argument to compute final d difference is it should be some portion of typical x of typical argument so if you increase your argument thousand times that maybe it's healthy your epsilon also increase thousand time and then uh, it may work i i i've used the the proposed uh, epsilon uh 10 uh, time uh, 10 in the power of a minus six times the infinite norm of x uh, and also uh, epsilon uh, uh, a small epsilon of my choice and uh, I've reached a, a minimum uh, uh, in the in the loss function mm -hmm. but it, it still wasn't uh, if I if I'm normalizing the, the loss function so it seems fine okay. uh, but if I'm not you normalizing, say that uh, things uh, depend not only on scale of argument but also on scale of function uh, and actually you're 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 right because third derivatives may be involved in uh in error of uh, approximation of function you and also you, yes i'm wondering uh, whether it uh there is a, a constraint uh, or constraint uh, due to the the uh, dynamic range of the computer uh maybe there in the functions there is a 10 uh, there there is a, a x in the power of uh, 4 times y in the power of 2 and uh, if i uh, insert a 100 so it grows yeah, uh, it's already a, a large number i i i agree with you so one should be careful and i agree with you completely uh, the the best approach is uh, to rescale variables and also rescale function in the way that uh, both are of order of one. And uh, it's good that you get such experience. So this experience will help you in the future. So if you meet a strange function, it's good to play and to scale it. That function, also argument, also function should be of order of one then uh, you are in in uh, better condition uh, thank you very much it's a very important observation uh, also for other students also for, for other students thank you very much uh, okay and uh, in general today lesson is about uh, convexity but it, it would be nice to continue. I have one more nice example uh, related to derivatives and uh, gradients. And in this case, in uh, ma in ma matrix form. So I, I will propose uh, that we work on this example. I give you example and hints and you show me, try to show me a solution. And then we will move to con convexity, maybe even have a small quiz. Okay, let me show my whiteboard. Uh, share. Okay, and where is my, why don't I see? Okay, I should lock my screen, pin. In and then go full. Okay, let's start in this way. So, uh, 
if if I have uh, some function of matrix, uh, let uh, capital X is uh, some uh, M by N matrix. Uh, so uh, what we uh, so uh, f of X is is uh, say R M by N to R. Uh, so what would be gradient of f with uh, respect to x? It also be, will be a matrix. And uh, li uh, like we learned with uh, gradients of vector, of functions of vectors, the, the, there should be uh, the same rule. Uh, inner product of gradient with dx uh, should give me df, differential function. The, the only thing that if I have uh, two matrices, uh, I just uh, remind me what we already had uh, in the lecture. Let me move it a bit my picture. If, if I have two matrices, so what is the standard inner product of two matrices. Does anybody remember? It's the uh, trace of uh, B transpose A. Trace, yes, uh, B transpose A or A transpose B is uh, the, the, the same. I, I would write A transpose B, but it doesn't matter. Okay, now we are ready to a very nice, interesting example. Uh, Assume that f of x, I, I have again this matrix x, is a trace a x cube. What is cube of matrix? It's a, x cube is x by x by x. Uh, okay. I, I, I will even open. Trace x by x by x. Uh, how can I, uh, I, I want uh, to get the gradient of this expression. So I need to calculate differential of this uh, expression. And uh, the simple idea, it's like we told, if x is coming se several times into some expression, I can think about x as a, uh, variable for example at first place and the constant on other play, play places so d d d f will be uh, traces linear operation i i immediately can trace uh, put trace uh, out outside so it will be d x by x by x Can do it in this way, or oh, I can write trace several times. It's the, the same. Uh, plus, uh, what should I write now? Anybody can help me with voice? X, dx, x, x, dx, x, and uh, oops, x. D no, no, I missed one. Uh, no. D dx, I, I would put it in parentheses, uh, by x, yes, plus uh, dx at the third plane. Uh, but, but, but we want uh, finally to get this inner product. So, for example, we want to put d dx in this product uh, at last place. But we can do it because we know under trace, uh, you 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 know general rule, trace a. I I even uh, trace a b is the same as trace b a. Yes, we already learned, and you can check it. If this is right, and uh, if I have three matrices trace a b c. What can I do with this? 
uh, product. I, I can uh, denote de this is some, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, a tilde and the C and the swap play places. Finally, I get very nice pro uh, properties that there is a, uh, uh, I have a right to do cyclic permutation under trace, cyclic shift. It, it, it will be trace uh, CAB and uh, so on. Okay, if if take into account those rules, I invite you to develop a differential of F. We, we all almost di did every, every, everything to develop differential of F uh, given D, DX, and then we will get a gradient of this uh, function, which looks a little bit frightening at the, at the first look. Okay, so you... You can uh, you can start working, or if you have any question or comment, it's good uh, time to to say to ask. Okay, just start working and raise your hand whenever you are ready. I just uh, wanted to ask uh, Neta and Moshe, are you with us? Yes. Uh, so, so if you have a, 
you you are still working with this type right of a uh, couple of students finished if you are working it's good and if you are, have difficulties and want to ask questions it's also may maybe good So uh, idea is uh, to put D dx on some uh, extreme place uh, in the end and uh, actually get expression that D df is inner product, something with D dx. And we know that inner product of two matrices is just trace A transpose B. Don't forget about transpose. It will in influence the answer in the end. Uh, I think uh, Priel was uh, the first. Would you like to show your, your solution? And what would you prefer to write on our whiteboard or do it in other way? I'll show you on the on my iPad. Okay, good. Okay. Do you see? Yes, yes. Okay, so DF is uh, taking uh, D on uh, on the trace. Uh, we learned that D ca can come in the trace. And uh, then- I, uh, Because trace is linear uh, operation. Yes. And yes. Uh, then we use the product rule, then uh, trace rules for a uh, uh, matrix uh, adding and uh, I use here the trace rule that can uh, uh, switch uh, positions of the matrices so it's a three trace of this um, trace rules I inserted the three and uh, the definition of inner product so uh, it's that uh, Term and I use the external definition of the gradient, so it's a uh, this term. Okay, so what your final uh, conclusion? That gradient is uh, three. Yes, three. Uh, x transpose by x transpose. So somebody can write x square transpose. Yes, it's yes. the same. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You can uh, stop your share. And as usual, I invite students, uh, everybody should remember when he gave answer and we, we will have this on the recording. Mm -hmm. Just on the recording, you, you will write your own for, for, for yourself that you answer it at this lesson, at this minute. And then collect and uh, give to assistant in the end, and you will get your bonuses. Okay. Uh, any any question? Any any comment about this? Okay. It seems that uh, everybody agree. So you can uh, stop your share, or uh, or I I will. Share my whiteboard. So your conclusion is that the uh, gradient of F is uh, three x square. I I can put it in this way, in this way. Transpose. Yes, and. Uh, Pay pay attention. 
that if I have a scalar function f of a scalar variable f of, f of t is t cube then uh, f prime of t we know from school it's two uh, three three t square so I get very nice uh, rule that it's uh, uh, ah, I don't have enough notation. Le uh, let me uh, let me denote this. This is uh, some I don't know phi phi of x. And then, uh, okay, I will erase. Uh, and the, if if I have such, oops, today. No, where is draw? Uh, I have some function phi of t. Yes, phi. Then I conclude that the gradient of trace of phi of uh, x is just the phi prime of x. So I apply this uh, function to my x, yes? P prime of x, but also I should put everything with uh, transpose. And this is very nice formula and very important. In the last lectures in our course, we will we will learn about optimization on uh, on uh, in space of matrices, positive semi-definite matrices, so-called semi-definite programming. And there we will use uh, different functions of matrices, but this this uh, rule uh, will stay, will stay. So once again, if uh, if my function is trace of x cube, I take derivative of this scalar function, it's uh, 3x square, and apply it and uh, get uh, immediate results. So, you proved is for one particular case, and of course it can be very easily in this way ex expanded to any polynomial, and then to any function which is uh, represented as finite or even infinite polynomial. Okay. So, so we can uh, assume uh, x in phi is uh, scalar. This yeah. is what you said. Here it's scalar. Oh, x, uh, x in uh, phi, phi tag of x transpose. You say that we can take the derivative of phi, x, uh, x, uh, x uh, cube. Just a second. I, I have phi of t, it's a scalar function of scalar variable. Then I can write phi of x. And we know uh, if if I want to take a function of matrix, polynomial function of matrix, algebra says that uh, by definition, it's polynomial of this of this ma matrix. It's just uh, like I already wrote in uh, in other place. It will be x cubed mean matrix x multiplied by itself three times. P of x is matrix, it's not scalar. But then uh, my f of x is trace of this. Of this. So f of x is scalar function of matrix because I take trace. But yes, gradient I... of scalar mm -hmm. matrix is uh, matrix itself, yes? Okay. Yeah, okay. This is for future. 
Okay, uh, let me keep it. And if you want, it's not on our record, so you can even do save your copy with Zoom or do screen uh, screen copy if if you wish. And uh, okay, I I ah ah okay, I can stop share. And this will remain. Uh, I I am stopping sharing my whiteboard. I hope it was okay. And then um, let me move to my PDF. Just a second. Uh, make one more share okay and now we moving to convexity part to convexity part wow and this is our quiz usually i do quiz in the beginning but because uh, this part was related to previous topic so I uh, propose you to solve this. Uh, what are our quiz? Just to validate that you listen to lecture. You can use your notes or lecture notes or whatever you want and uh, answer this question. Show if I have a, a convex function uh, in lecture, I showed that it's Hessian should be if it is twice differentiable, then the, its Hessian should be positive uh, semi-definite. Okay, so this is a rather short quiz. How we do it uh, usually in normal year, you, you submit it to Moodle, but because we have small number of uh, students, you can just uh, send me I don't know your PDF or whatever writing to my email, and uh, I I will uh, I will put your email uh, my email into message on Zoom. You can start working, or if you uh, I'm having a question, yes. I'm having a bit of uh, technical difficulties today. Uh, uh, my house doesn't have power and I'm uh, connected to Zoom through my phone, so I can't actually submit anything today. J uh, just a second. You, you, you say that you cannot take picture, you write down on a piece of paper and take picture and send it. Well, okay. when you send it? Uh, I might be able to do Okay, if, if you uh, will be able, uh, I will put uh, my email. Uh, actually, my email and the address is on the uh, homepage of, of the course, but I also will put it here. Uh, chat. We need to send the answer to your email? Yes, yes, because small number of students, it will be the easiest for me. Uh, okay.
and uh, okay. Recording. Okay. Uh, So I hope this uh, exercise was not dif uh, difficult. If you have uh, any questions or comments regarding this, it's time to say. Okay. So then I I will uh, remind you a little bit. Uh, and uh, once more, if, if you're volunteering to open your video it will be more encouraging for for me at least you have uh, showing his face it's all, all already easier for, for me to see at least one face uh okay thank you very much uh okay and let's uh move uh, to the material of our lecture uh, uh should I go fast by lecture itself? I am, I am thinking. Uh, so the topic was uh, convexity, yes? So the long definition, convex function, and set. Uh, where is my pointer? Okay. And uh, A epigraph, extended mm -hmm. value function, convex combination, so on, so on, so on. And uh, then you had uh, another lecture on uh, optimality conditions for mm -hmm. local and global minimum, sufficient and necessary. Okay, and let's move gradually to our ex ex exercises. So, first of all, uh, in the lecture, I, I will uh, remind you briefly. Uh, so, so we, we, we told that, that there are several properties of uh, convex functions, uh, say intersection, sum, linear uh, transformation, and level subset of uh, convex functions are convex sets. Uh, yeah, did, did, did you have wanted to say something or? Ah, okay. So I, I will remind you briefly how we did uh, proof, uh, for example, for the first fact, uh, uh, how to show that uh, if, if I have several convex sets, CI, uh, CI then the intersection is all, also convex set. So I, I, I take two Two points in this intersection, and want to show that uh, uh, alpha x plus one minus alpha y is uh, also belonging to this set when alpha between zero and one. And then I, I will prove the set is convex. How do I do it? If uh, two points x y are in intersection, then they belong to every each of those sets. Then uh, alpha x plus al one minus alpha y belong to C one if x y belong to C one, and if x and y belong to C two, then this combination belongs to C two. So this combination belongs to all of those sets. Then it uh, belongs also to intersection. This is the scheme of uh, the proof. And to get used to it, I uh, suggest you to solve this uh, uh, example number two. Uh, we have a notion of sum of two sets. What, uh, what is sum of two sets? The, uh, this is set of all sums x1 plus x2 when uh, x1 is in the first set and x2 in the st second set and there was a graphical uh, ex ex example uh, if uh, here are c and here are s but 
it's the, the same. If I have this small set S1 and the S2 is this inner circle, then uh, every point uh, in uh, S2, I add uh, any possible vector in S S1. So I get this circle around every point in uh, S2. So this larger circle, which encircles all those small, is the uh, sum. So you can uh, start uh, working uh, to show this. So if if uh, like is uh, written in example number two. Just start working and whenever you're ready, or if you have any question on the way, you are welcome to ask. And Priel is already ready. Okay, but we will wait for other students. So both. Okay, uh, uh, does Moshe wants to show his solution? Yeah, I can show. Okay. Yeah, okay. Just me? I, I stop my sharing. And uh, you can, uh, you like to share your, your, your screen? Oh. Hey. Uh, I, I don't know paper. The second. Moshe, in, in which way, way would you like to show, Moshe? I, I wrote on paper. How, how is it possible to, to show that? I think the camera would uh, project it uh, I, upside I don't, down. I don't hear you. Well, uh, okay, let, let's Tomer to try. I see that Moshe has. Tomer, are you with us? Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay. So uh, I denote uh, big C as uh, the join of uh, C1 and C2. Mm -hmm. uh, and I took a uh, general uh, X and Y in C to points. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that there are, by definition of C, there are uh, X1 and Y1 uh, that are in C1 and X2 and Y2 in C2. Uh, so uh, x is x1 plus uh, x2, and uh, y is y1 plus y2. Mm -hmm. uh, I took uh, any alpha in uh, between uh, 0 and 1, and I know that uh, I want to show that alpha x plus 1 minus alpha y uh, belongs to C. Mm -hmm. So we know that this uh, equals to alpha uh, of x1 and x2 plus 1 minus alpha times the uh, y1 plus one uh, y2 um so i opened this expression and uh, wrote it uh, this way 
so we know that alpha x1 plus 1 minus alpha y1 belongs to c1 mm -hmm. uh, because it's a convex set uh, by definition and the same with the uh, alpha x2 plus 1 min minus alpha y2 belongs to c2 and mm -hmm. uh, by definition of c uh, because we have something in c1 plus something in c2 we know that this whole expression belongs to c uh, and they wrote it here so uh, by definition uh, of convex set uh, we know that c is a convex set okay uh, thank you very much thank you very much you can stop your sharing and uh, i will share i have a question i'm not clear on the proof okay so i uh, i i'm sorry i should have asked be before before tomer uh, yeah, Tomer, would you like to get back to your? So you can uh, yes. share it. Yes. Okay. What was the question? Uh, in the third line, why, how can I know that there is some x in C one and some x in C two that uh, their sum is x? Because that's the definition. And same for y. Because it's the definition of definition C of what? of a uh, big C, every point in big C is uh, combin uh, it's the sum of a uh, point in C1 plus a uh, point in C2. Uh, oh, oh, so that's what, sorry, I didn't understand uh, how you added the sets together. I thought, okay, yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and uh, Neta, thank you very much for your questions. Remember that they have help other listeners. <laughs> it's very important to ask questions. Okay. And uh, let me, uh, I stop the sharing. Uh, and uh, now we have uh, uh, question number four. Um, it's, uh, it's formulated a little bit uh, overloaded. It says that f is a function from convex set uh, to r. Uh, le let's uh, do a more simple example. Ass assume that f is a function from r, I don't know, rn to, to r, okay? From some n-dimensional space, a uh, function of convex function of uh, uh, vector variable without this uh, restriction and we want to show that sublevel set of this function is a convex set so if i choose some alpha and do like in ge ge geographic map cross section if i have a valley if i have some paraboloid yes con uh, convex function and do cross section then this cross section we know that it's a uh, ellipsoid yes so it's it's convex so this is this your next uh, this is your next challenge you can start working and priel already has solution very good but we will wait for other students and priel uh, you <coughs> You are welcome to show you icons. Okay. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so we. Uh... Uh, just a second. Something. Okay. Okay. Now, now it's working. Yeah. Okay. So I denoted the D as the. Uh level set and uh, I assume in a negative that D is not convex. Uh, can, can you show your pointer because it's uh, not easy to follow without pointer. Okay, so I assume in a negative that D is not a convex set. So uh, there exist, uh, uh, there are X1 and X2 in D. Uh, so that uh, because they are belonging to D, so uh, F on them is a uh, less or equal to alpha. And uh, the negative uh, assumption uh, tells 
plus that uh, there is a point on the on the line between them okay mm -hmm. uh, such that uh, f on the, that point is not belonging to d okay so if uh, z is not belonging to d so f on z is greater than alpha mm -hmm. every point on d is uh, less or equal to alpha mm -hmm. okay so um I took, uh, um, I said that X1 and X2, uh, we can say that it's a uh, mamash uh, 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 equal alpha because we can uh, use on the, the hatah. If we look at the uh, cross section, cross section, yes. Cross section of, uh, of uh, uh, values that uh, less than alpha, and we can use the. Uh, uh, to say that uh, that there is a x2 and x1 that uh, uh, equals alpha. Okay, so there is um, x1 that uh, fx1 equals alpha, x2 such that f of x2 equals alpha. Mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, attack, there is a point uh, them that f of uh, z is uh, greater than alpha. Yes. Okay. F on the on this Z, okay, Z is a, a um, Z is a convex uh, combination of X1 and X2 because it's on the line that uh, mm -hmm. connects them. So that's FZ. It's greater than alpha. We already say that. That's a, a simple algebra. And uh, we say that F of X1 and F of X2 is alpha, so it equals to that expression, mm -hmm. and that's a, a contradiction to the definition of a convex function f, that f on a, con on a convex combination should be less or equal to, the, to this. So we got a contradiction, so uh, we end our uh, uh, proof. Okay. Because we got this uh, assumption assumption okay thank you very much but keep it still on uh, on the screen uh, any 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 comment any question about this uh, proof or maybe it may be shown in simpler way i think uh, we can prove it without uh, assuming uh, without uh, without uh, uh, looking for contradictions eh? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Can you show it on on this, or you you want to show your your? Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 They, they didn't show us yet, so it's your turn uh, to show your version of of the proof. Of the show. Yeah. Yes. 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 Um. So, can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Uh, so, say uh, X and Y are uh, of the set, uh, uh, of this set. Mm -hmm. uh, so, since uh, F is a convex function, by definition, uh, F, should, F of uh, alpha X plus one minus alpha, one minus alpha Y uh, is less or equal than uh, alpha f of x plus one minus alpha f of y. Mm -hmm. And uh, since they are both uh, belong to the set, uh, f of x um, is less, less or equal than beta, mm -hmm. use uh, this uh, um, in here, mm -hmm. which, equals to, which is equal to beta since uh, um, yeah, which is equal to beta, and therefore uh, it applies. Okay, yes. Thank you very much. So both of you are getting your bonus, and thank, thank you very much. And uh, we continue with uh, more examples. Uh, where is my screen? Uh, Okay, 
And one more example, it may be the last example for today. Uh, norm. General, it uh, happens the general norm of a vector is a, a convex uh, function. Uh, do, do I record? Yes, I, I, I am recording. Uh, what examples of norms uh, do we know? Uh, everybody knows Euclidean norm of a vector, just square root of sum of squares of components. And but there are many other norms. For example, uh, p norm, so-called p norm. Euclidean, Euclidean is two norm, and if we take sum of uh, components absolute value in, in degree p and think our one over p for p greater or equal to one it also works for example when p is one it's so-called l1 norm it just will be sum of absolute values and uh, if p uh, goes to infinity it's infinite norm it will be just maximal abs absolute value and all those are norms and many more it's just example of two norm and P and P norm. And uh, we, we are going to show that uh, general norm is convex. And for this, uh, we should uh, uh, remind ourselves definition of general norm it should be here. Okay. Is the definition of gen general norm uh, is a function of a vector x, scalar function of vector x, which is non negative. Uh, it's zero only if x is zero vector. Uh, it's, um, I forgot the name of this property. It's like linear, but uh, with alpha under absolute value. It has some special name. Does anybody remember the name of this pro property? But in short, if alpha is a number, by the way, it may be also a complex number. But we will do it now in real. Uh, then uh, norm of alpha x is absolute val value of alpha multiplied by norm of x. And uh, tri triangle in absolute homogeneity. Uh, homogeneity, yes. Yes. Uh, homogeneity or homogeneity, something like, like this. And uh, uh, the last property is triangle and inequality norm of sum of two ve vectors less or equal sum of norms. It's geometric meaning is here. And uh, uh, the challenge is now using definition of convex function and those four properties to show that general norm, including all those and many more, is a convex function. You can start working, and I see that Priya already has a solution. But we will wait for... Ah, yeah, it was from previous time. Okay. Okay, you you can start working. And I will pause the recording, and please remind me to resume recording. And I resumed yes. my recording. It's very good. It's a very good point you started. Okay, please, uh, <laughs> Tomer, show us. Okay, so I denoted the uh, f of x as norm of x, um, and I took uh, alpha between uh, 0 and 1, and the uh, general x and y uh, in Rn, if uh, it's norm of uh, R, okay, but it doesn't have to be Rn, it can be anything. Um, so uh, I wanted to show that uh, f of uh, alpha x plus uh, minus alpha y is a mm -hmm. uh, smaller equal to alpha f of x plus one minus alpha of f of y. Mm -hmm. uh, so first is the definition of a, so we get the norm of alpha x plus one minus alpha of y. And the second uh, inequality we get from the triangle inequality plus uh, property three, uh, which was uh, that norm of alpha x is alpha in uh, absolute value uh, norm of x. Uh, Okay. Oh, so, uh, that uh, 
absolute value of alpha norm of x plus one minus alpha in absolute value uh, norm of y. It's uh, yeah. homogeneity is something. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and we know that uh, alpha and one minus alpha is uh, uh, bigger than zero, so we can uh, lose the absolute values. Mm -hmm. And we use again the definition of f, and we get that alpha f of x uh, plus one minus alpha f of y. Uh, and by the convex definition, the convex function definition, we get that uh, f of x is convex. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, any any question? Any comment? It's rather clear. Rather clear. Okay, you you can stop. Stop your share. And uh, actually, you see, we finished uh, rather early. And uh, now, uh, now we can gradually move to reception hours if 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 there is any need what usually we do we have a free conversation free mathematical conversation and then conversation about homework and so on and then conversation about uh, personal issues without recording so any mathematical remark or anything uh, regarding homework? Okay, 